I got a few articles that I want to share regarding the 50 series of graphics cards. Samsung unveiling their new Odyssey OLED. Also, I want to cover the AMD Ryzen 5 8600G. And the reason I'm excited for this, my friends, is because we may be jumping into 1440p territory, as you will see. 14KS preparing to launch soon. And then the last article is an RTX 3050 being spotted. So first up, we're going to be going over the rumored NVIDIA RTX 5090 specs, the cores, the GDDR7 memory, and the bandwidth. The number one thing that I am hoping for is the PCI to be powered and no cables. How dope. So Dude, I really can't wait for the I can't wait for the more cases to be supporting the cableless motherboards where everything is on the back. I can't wait for like to build a computer because I haven't done one. I'm pretty sure Asus is the only one making the motherboard for it. And I don't I'm I don't even think the cases minus the review units are even out. But anyways, let's go here. So the specifications. So we got 204 streaming multiprocesses SMs leading to a total core count of 26,112. It's expected to be equipped with 32 gigabytes per second GDDR7 memory operating over a 384-bit bus. This configuration contrasts with earlier considerations of a 512-bit bus. The L2 cache is anticipated to be 96 megabytes, and then the GPU's core architecture, referred to as Blackwell GB202 gaming die, is described to have a 12 graphics processing cluster GPCs times eight texture processing clusters TPCs configuration. Each TPC is expected to contain SMs, each with 128 FP32 cores, and this structure leads to a theoretical core count of 24,567, 192 SMs for a fully enabled GB202 die. However, manufacturing efficiencies may necessitate disabling some SMs, reducing the expected core count to 24,046 or less. The RTX 5090's memory bandwidth is projected to be 1,536 gigabytes a second, a considerable increase from the 1,008 gigabytes a second of the RTX 4090. This improvement represents a 50% enhancement in memory through Oh, typo. I spotted it. Oh my goodness. I spotted it. And approximately a 60% increase in shader density. The overall performance uplift anticipated to be up to a two point or to be a two times or more compared to its predecessor. So here's like a bunch of stuff that you can compare all of that stuff to, which is really why I wish video cards made a website or made an article on this because they always add those charts. To their uh to their articles which is just i love how they uh, how they do that and then right here is basically the same thing it goes over some of the performance and all of that stuff but it also covers the release date basically just being quarter four of 2024 um but that's really all i need to say about this one the specifications are just basically confirming all the other stuff and then this right here i just wanted to share it because i used to, i had before i upgraded to the 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 two 4k 144 hertz monitors that i got now um i had the samsung the other not the white one but a different the same different samsung odyssey that i gave my my brother-in-law for christmas but anyways so i want to see what the actual resolution of this new monitor is and the actual refresh rate of the new one as well so i'm just going to quickly i don't want to read all of this guy i don't want to make the video all right so we don't even have anything so it's going to be 5120 by uh, 1440 again right so so oh, let's go there so here's a uh, core lighting feature provide within three point my buzzer so it's going to have a 240 hertz panel i'm pretty sure the other one was like 165 hertz my old one um and then oh wait hold up bruh So just 400 specs, exceeding 400 units. All right, so it doesn't even cover that. Well, that was a rip. All right, so now we're gonna get into the integrate. So this is what I'm actually super excited for this one because you like Intel is so far behind AMD with their like integrated graphics. It's like ridiculous. So anyways, here's the APU segment featuring powerful RDNA 3 graphics. The CPU is gonna be based on the Mobile Phoenix Hawkpoint Silicon, incorporating up to 12 RDNA 3 compute units. 
even though the name Ryzen 8000G might suggest its successor to the 7000 series, the intention behind this new series is to cater to a different market segment. The Ryzen 800G or 8000G series is designed for users who don't prioritize CPU performance and may not require dedicated discrete GPUs. Recent testing has unveiled details about one of the upcoming 8000G SKUs, the Ryzen 5 86, 8600 APU underwent testing. All right, sorry, we're gonna get, all right, so down here. All right, so according to the leaked information, and this like this is what I was saying about the 50 series with, because this is why I love, because I have really bad attention. Um, so like being able to just like simply look at it is pretty cool. Um, and as you guys can see here, this is pretty sweet. So according to the leaked information, 8,000 should be a future six core. So I'm just gonna actually go into the, because we and if you want to read this, you can go ahead. But so if we take a look, we got the 86. 100G here, six cores, 12 threads, 4.35 gigahertz, five gigahertz, eight CU RDN3, 65 watts. So this is like where I'm pretty excited because I haven't used the 8700G. If any of you have used this, let me know down in the comment section. Um, Wait, these aren't even out yet. So you guys haven't, right? That's not out yet. Yeah, they're not out yet. I was gonna say, bro, hold up one second. All right, so anyways, let's go ahead and move on. Intel i9-14900KS is preparing to launch. This is just a leak, so it's not like anything like super, super duper duper um, important. But this right here, again, this is why I love this website. Uh, so integrated graphics obviously is gonna be coming with the 14900KS. This is basically just the overclocked version of the, uh, the normal 14900. So here we go, it's all the specs. Please don't complain about it, right? We got more power, there's gonna be more power, right? I don't understand why people are so, I, I'm actually, I really am actually curious about that. Like why are, uh, and I get it, man, okay? I understand, I'm j but I really am, I'm, I really am just curious. Like why, why do people complain about the power? Serious question. Like, I'm just being, okay, I'm just going to toss it out there. Dude, if you can afford a 14900K, which you're probably going to be pairing with a 4090, if you can afford those things, why do you care about how much power they draw? I'm just saying, dude. Dude, this TV draws like 800 watts. I'm just saying, dude. You know what I mean? Like, or hold on. So it's like, it's like 700. It's like 700 and something. And then Linus just barely made a video. If, if you guys don't follow Linus Tech Tips, he just barely bought the biggest TV on the world. It's like 100 and, 115 inches or 125. It's not even sold in America because they literally use, it's a, uh, I think it's Vizio and they're using LG's whatever patent. So they can't even sell it in America. But either way, he was talking about how it draws like 900 watts from the wall. So I'm just like saying, dude, like the more power, the bigger, the better something is you like, we're not at a point in the, in, 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 uh, the future where we can just bring like a computer capable of 12 K 7 million FPS and not have it draw a lot of power. We're not at that point. Right. <laughs> so like, I don't know, dude. I just don't, I really just don't get the power stuff. I don't, I don't get it. So anyways, RTX 3050, six gigabyte is listed in Russia, fanless model planned. Um, so this is like budget of the budgets. So I actually got a, uh, a brand deal of some like super duper old graphics card that's going to be coming. It's like, it's like a $100 GPU. It's like super potato, but I really want to test it. Um, cause it's going to be a funny video. Um, but anyway, it kind of looks like this without the cool fan stuff. It's like a, it's really potato graphics card, but um, I accepted it just because I wanted to test it compared to other stuff. So anyways, there we go. I knew I was going to find it somewhere right here. We got 3058 gigabyte and then also 3056 gigabyte. Really, my main thing is uh, the the price here so we got from the 3058 gigabyte and then we got the 3056 gigabyte it's literally a hundred dollars less almost pretty much like it's like 80 bucks less 
So I think that that's pretty cool. You know, $180 graphics card, brand new. I think that's pretty neat. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. It's not the best graphics card, right? I, I totally understand that, dude. But like, at least we have a GPU that's actually purchasable under $200 now. That's actually new. And that isn't ancient. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. We still have the 1660 and the 1660 Super, which I don't even think that is under $200 yet. The 1660 is, but the Super definitely is not because I literally just built my Nisa computer for Christmas that had the 1660 Super in it. Check out that video if you guys haven't, because it actually performed pretty well. And she just plays The Sims, but she's able to play The Sims at 1440p because it's already past Christmas now. But either way, let me know down in the comments section below what you guys think about this. I really, th I really, I think it's pretty cool that we have a graphics card under 200 bucks. And then obviously new graphics card from Nvidia. I think it's pretty sweet that we got a 50% increase on one portion of the actual graphics card, whether or not that, I'm trying to think of the word. It's a big word, so I'm not like thinking about it very well. Whether or not that leads to a, meaningful difference is the only way i can think to explain it at the moment because i can't think of the word i don't know because to be fair dude like the 4060 and the 4060 ti you look at the numbers of those graphics cards and you're like this is not going to perform very well then you actually use it and you're like there's no way and if you have not used a 4060 or 4060 ti then don't leave an opinion like actually like check the facts dude they perform very well for the numbers you see like we're talking 1440p territory, dude, on high settings. That's good for what you see in the numbers of those graphics cards. For the TI, at least, high settings. Normal 4060, 1440p, but you're gonna have to tinker with the settings. So, um, and then the 4070 and then up, but obviously we are still, t we're in the like $400 price. So it's, I guess, not necessarily but it's still the numbers is, is really the main thing you know what i mean like i don't know if it's nvidia's ai stuff that they got going on inside of the graphics cards or just the, the drivers that they have i don't really know what it is but i know for a fact that they perform very well for what you get i guess but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video i'll catch you guys in the next one peace